guys welcome back to inside the hem i am lindsay and today i'm here on behalf of blank slate patterns where i'll be reviewing my new catalina dress this was my last review this is the winter song dress i will leave a link in the description box below um, to see my review on this dress but today we're going to be talking about the catalina dress um blank slate's blog theme this month is travel and so I put a lot of thought into what I like to wear when I travel. I recently went to Montreal where I was on five airplanes in three days. It's not that far from me but in order to get somewhere sometimes you have to take multiple planes otherwise you pay a gazillion dollars to go somewhere for a few days which I'm not about. Um, so when I traveled, um, a few weeks ago, I found myself reaching for maxi dresses. And I think that there is a good argument for wearing maxi dresses when you travel on planes. Uh, one of them is, well, first of all, let's just address people's, um, wardrobe on planes in general. Like when did it become okay? to wear pajamas out in public anywhere, but much less on an airplane. Like I remember, not personally, but you know, I've seen in movies and you know, throughout history books and heard from my grandparents that, you know, when they traveled on an airplane, it was a huge deal. And everyone pretty much dressed to the nines to travel on an airplane. I mean, it was very fancy and a very big deal. And nowadays, I feel like people just roll out of bed and roll up to the airport and <laughs> put no thought into what they wear at all. And that's really disappointing to me. I mean, sure, do you have a 6 a.m. flight? And is it really annoying to get up and get ready and put on makeup and all of that at 6 a.m.? Absolutely, it is. But eventually, like, the, the time goes by and you're still traveling at... 9 a.m. or at noon depending on where you're going and you're still in your pajamas you still roll out of bed and now it's the middle of the day so it doesn't it doesn't make sense anymore so I always like to be prepared and so whenever I travel via airplane there are no yoga pants there's no pajamas I brush my hair I put on makeup I act like an adult I get it together <laughs> to go out into public as one should so but back to the maxi dresses okay so this is why maxi dresses are perfect for traveling on airplanes. One is, I, like I said, was on several airplanes throughout my trip. One of them, I was iced out. I was freezing cold the whole time. Um, the other four that I was on, well, the other three of them was okay temperature, like I was fine. And then one of them, I was so, so, so hot. So temperature regulation on an airplane is just impossible. There's never going to be the perfect temperature from one plane to the next. So a maxi dress is great because you can leave it long and it'll cover your legs like a blanket or you can even pull up the hem and you know not too far but rest it on your on your thigh and then you can get some circulation going on the bottom half of your legs. Um, you wear like a cardigan or a light jacket to cover your shoulders or why I opted for the extended shoulder version of this was because I could get a little bit more coverage there. There are two versions, well there's several versions of the Catalina but in terms of the shoulder seam um, there's two. You can do a tank or you can do this like extended shoulder sleeve which I think is just super flattering on so many people. Um, so, but yeah, the length is really nice because you can kind of use it as a blanket if you need it or, you know, lift it up if you need some circulation there. Also, I feel like a maxi dress is the quintessential day to night garment. Even if it's in a casual um, jersey fabric like this one, um, it, depending on how you accessorize it or what kind of shoes you're wearing, you could totally get up in the morning, get on the airplanes, travel, 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 and then when you get there, head out, even go to dinner or a show in something like this, and you're not feeling like you're underdressed. I think it's one of those things that you can dress up and dress down really, really simply, and that's perfect for traveling, because the last thing you wanna do is spend more time in your hotel room 
changing or getting ready. Like you want to get there and you want to get hit the streets and get going and, and start exploring the city that you're in. Um, so that's what I found myself doing um, when I was in Montreal. So whenever I was tasked with finding an outfit perfect for traveling for a blank slate, um, I was naturally drawn to her Catalina dress. Um, she has a few other maxi dresses, but I really liked this one because of the elastic waist. Um, I like the scoop neckline. Um, all of it in general was kind of just very simple and straightforward, um, which seemed very relaxed and casual and something easy to travel. And you don't want something too fussy, you know, when you're traveling. It also has these really great pockets, very, very deep pockets. I think they go down to about here, um, which is nice to hold little things. You know, when you're traveling, you're grabbing things here and there. You've got things put away in places and, and pockets and bags and stuff. So it's nice if you need like your boarding pass or something really handy, you can just keep it um, right here in one of the pockets. Um, I did think though that based on the pictures on the website, I was a little concerned because the skirt looked a little straight. It looked like a column skirt. And whenever I looked at the pattern pieces themselves too, they are rectangles. And so I got nervous because I am a quintessential pear shape. I have a lot more um, width in my hips than I do in my waist. And so I was like, I'm not sure how this is going to work around my hips. I ended up measuring, um, I did a straight medium for the entire thing, bust, um, waist, and hip. Um, and I ended up measuring the hip measurement for the medium, and there was plenty of ease there for my waist. So um, good job drafting that, Melissa. That was awesome. Um, you know, you can cinch in the waist for those pear-shaped people. You can cinch in the waist and to, to any degree. You know, I could have cinched this in even more if I needed to, but the hip measurement is really... Um, I needed to make sure that I was going to cover my hips. But because it's a column, I was nervous that there wouldn't be enough width at the hem of the skirt to walk in. It looked really narrow in her pictures and it could just be the angle of them. So I decided to do a split hem where basically where the side seams of the skirt are, I just surge down um, to the knee line and then from the knee line down to the hem, I just turned the seams in half an inch um, and created a little slit there. That way whenever you walk, you know, you have lots of freedom. You know, sometimes you're in an airport and you're running from one place to the next, literally. Um, there's lots of stairs, there's, you know, all kinds of different things. So I just wanna make sure I had enough freedom of movement in my legs. So I did the split hem, super, super simple to do. Um, and was really proud of myself because I thought through the hemming of the little angle that it would create. So whether you're doing any split hem at all, whether it's on a top of a, like a bodice or if it's on a skirt, um, you can create a really nice finish on the insides, which as you all um, might remember, that's one of my big New Year's resolutions for 2017 to really focus on what things look like on the inside as well as the outside. So with that in mind, I, I created the miter hem, miter corner, and I was really, really proud of that. I ended up using my cover stitch machine on every single raw edge. So for the neckline, I did cut a piece of bias tape and I sewed it right sides together and then flipped the entire thing over to the inside. I didn't fold it under and then turn it over. I just turned raw edge and all over to the inside, cover stitched the whole thing, and then trimmed um, the excess bias tape off, which gave a really nice neckline that lies really, really flat. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And then on the sleeves, I kind of went rogue on her instructions a little bit and instead of um, sewing the side seams first and then creating the bias and then doing the bias tape in the round for the for the sleeves, instead I just on a when it was flat, whenever the bodice was flat and the shoulder seams are sewn together and you have that little C shape, um, I just turned that in one time, the seam allowance half an inch, and cover stitch that flat and then sewed the side seams together. Um, and that to me just produced like a much, well, it was easier to do, first of all. And I just didn't 
see the need of doing the bias tape on the um, on the on the armhole. Um, she suggests woven bias tape. Uh, I'll go back to the neckline, and I didn't. I just did self bias tape. So I used the same fabric. Um, to do the bias tape which gives a nice look on the inside too. Um, of course you can follow her directions to the T and of course you'll still have a great garment but you know I wanted to, to do some techniques that I felt more comfortable with and so those are the two big things that I did for the neckline and the armhole. So I sewed the skirt to the bodice with the waistband casing exactly how the instructions tell you to do and um, you know, didn't didn't do anything extra there. I will say that I did do some extra basting stitches. She only has you do one, um, and I just felt more comfortable doing two. I like when you're when you're gonna be um, sewing when you're gonna be gathering something, and you have to sew that gathered piece to another piece that's not gathered. So you gather the skirt on this pattern. You gather the skirt to be the width of the bodice. And then you sew those two things together. So I just like to have two rows of basting stitches that one is slightly above and one is slightly below the seam allowance so that whenever you sew that seam allowance to the bodice, the gathers are a little bit more even and a little bit more like kind of just like held in place a little bit better. Um, so that's really the only thing that I did there, a very small, just extra step um, that I added to the waistband casing. But other than that, um, that is, that's really it. That's, that's um, all the changes that I made for this dress. Um, I will say there are several versions of this. There are, like I said about the shoulders, there's the tank version and then this extended sleeve. Um, you can also do it um, a little bit above the knee, a little bit below the knee, and then maxi length. And also I wanna say too, she was super smart whenever she um, put the, cause you know it's a PDF that you print out. She doesn't have printed patterns. So when you're piecing all of that together, um, you know, a maxi dress can take up a lot of pieces of paper that you have to tape together. She avoided that by just having the above the knee cut line, the below the knee cut line, and then there's a little instruction there that if you want the maxi dress to add 14 inches on to your size cut line of the below the knee version. So I thought that that was really, really smart, especially for those of you that are petite and end up having to hem um, your maxi dresses anyways, um, instead of adding 14 inches, you just add 10 inches or add, you know, whatever it is that you need. So I really loved that. I ended up making mine a little bit longer so that I could wear it with, um, wedges. Uh, that's just more comfortable to me than flats. I, I don't, I don't know, but whenever I travel, I wear wedges. So, um, uh, I made it a little bit longer to cover the shoe a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so you didn't have to piece together like a ton of, sheet of sheets of paper just for a square. You know what I'm saying? So that was really smart and helpful and I really appreciated that whenever, you know, I didn't have to print out a gazillion sheets of paper for, you know, one big square. So kudos to Melissa for that. I really thoughtful and appreciate um, saving the trees and saving the time and energy it takes to piece together the, the pattern, the, the PDF pattern. I didn't have to make any alterations to the pattern pieces at all. Like I said, I cut a straight medium and it fits me really well, I think, all over. It, um, a lot of times whenever you cut one size, especially if you're pear shaped, it can be too big on top or too small on the bottom and I really don't feel like I had that issue with this dress at all. I feel like it fits just as well um, on the bodice and the bust as it does in the hips even though I cut the same size. So um, just uh, just some really generous drafting there. I mean, it is a gathered skirt and it is an elastic waistband. So, you know, you are gonna have the ability to um, cinch in more than you would if it were, you know, not elastic waistband or, you know, the skirt is a little bit more generous because of those gathers. Um, so, so yeah, I was really pleased with that. So yeah, this is my new go-to travel garment. Um, I don't really have any plans to go anywhere <laughs> anytime soon since we just got back. Um, we've got the move coming up to the new apartment. Um, my birthday's coming up in August. 
Um, sometimes we go somewhere, sometimes we don't. Um, my next trip will probably be back to New York City in the fall. And I think that this will be perfect. This is, well, also just a, a note on the fabric. Um, it is Liberty Print Jersey that I got from fabric.com. Here it is. Liberty of London Defour Jersey Knit Heidi Maria Eggplant is what it's called. Um, it was 18 bucks and no longer available. Sorry. Um, but Liberty of London Jersey Knit, I'm sure you can find in a different print. But I do think that this particular print being purple and white, and I don't know if you can tell um, from where you are, but um, it has seashells and um, other like little fawn, sea underwater fawn type of things, um, sand dollars, things like that all over it. So it is kind of like a beachy print, but without being like in your face, obvious beachy. But I think the color, I love purple. I think purple is one of my secret favorite colors. Um, I'm just drawn to it a lot. But what I loved about this being purple and white and that's it, is that I feel like you can wear this spring, summer, and fall. It's one of those colors that really is gonna transition through the seasons. Um, so I'm sad that it's sold out, but maybe you guys can find it somewhere else. I will link the, um, fabric.com link for the fabric so that you guys can read about the content and the, get the name of it so that you can try and search for it somewhere else if you want. Um, but I mean, a Liberty Maxi dress. <laughs> Look at me, right? Like I'm so fancy. I think it's the first, um, maybe the first Liberty garment I've ever made, even though I have Liberty print. I might have a top, but definitely not a dress, definitely not a maxi. So I really love it. I really, really love it. I think this one turned out really, really great. So yeah, I'll have lots of links in the description box below. Um, I'll have a link to the pattern itself, obviously. Um, like I said, I'll link to the winter song dress that I'm wearing, um, the video that I made for that. I will link to the fabric and if you guys have any questions or comments about the dress, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, I think I have a couple more videos for you guys um, in this space and then I move in like two weeks, a little less than two weeks at this point now. So um, I'll be busy doing that. Um, so stay tuned, lots of exciting things. Thanks for watching. See y'all soon. Bye.